Day three is in full swing. Roland Garros is the talk of the town. Tennis is on the agenda. Welcome to Live at Roland Garros. Welcome to all of you watching on Facebook, on YouTube, the Roland Garros website, and the official app. Now, if you want to be part of our daily debate coming up in the show, you can go to Twitter or Instagram to vote. And once again, we welcome in former world number five, Daniela Hantukova, who's part of the team. But first, it was a very packed day three here in Paris. The world number one was on the ropes, but she survives. It's another Grand Slam roller coaster ride for the world number five. And the buzz that follows Federer wherever he goes. As always, we have a lot to pack in, and there's actually still a lot of tennis to be played, and the weather is just about holding out. And, and Dalia, I wanted to ask you, if you have a day like this, it's really long, if you have a couple of interruptions, some long matches, you are last on the schedule. Are you good at waiting? Are you impatient? Do you sleep? <laughs> How do you pass the time if you're sort of match five coming on at eight o'clock at night? I was terrible at waiting. So <laughs> it's really one of these days that I don't really miss uh, not playing anymore. But it's not easy for the players because you don't really know how to time your day, when to eat, especially when to warm up. Sometimes it can happen that the matches before you go for so long that you have to at least warm up four or five times. So you waste a lot of energy. But one thing that every player wants to make sure that the match is finishes because once it's interrupted and you have to come back the next mm. day, that's when the trouble starts and mentally it's not easy. So whatever happens, as long as you can finish the match, <laughs> how long late it is doesn't matter, but you want to be out there and knowing whether you have won or lost because there's nothing worse just waiting and sitting around. Actually, that was my follow-up to you is, is you've mentioned this a couple of times. Why is the first round so nerve-wracking? Because we even had Serena Williams say yesterday, I was so nervous to come out for my first round match. You know, the Grand Slams are the tournaments that you, you play all, all your life for. This is where you put all those trainings in and practice sessions in. So when it's about to start, you just you don't really know where you are at, how the other players are playing. You know, once the tournament gets started, you kind of start to have a sense where your confidence is, how you're playing, and you can work on things. But right before the start, you just never know what's going to happen, especially for the seeded players. As I said yesterday, there is so much expectation on them so much pressure so they just want to get it on uh, want to get out there and also when you start to move start to play the matches you get ri rid of the nerves that way as well okay well there's a few seated players who still have those nerves because they're in action right now including on court Philippe Chatrier and that's where we first find Eli Weinstein hello Eli hi everybody welcome back to court Philippe Chatrier uh, we are here and as we speak a few seconds ago Simona Halep just got broken and so Tomjanovic uh, is up 5-2 in the second. We're looking at a third possible set, probable possible set, um, which is a good thing for Simona Halep, really, because since 2013, she has won 91 three-setters. Uh, she comes in second place behind Pliskova, who is in 94, so she loves to grind those out in three sets. Uh, let's talk about Simona Halep real quick. She's the title defender. Title defense has begun here at Roland Garros. She has a long way to go, obviously. She has to win this one and then another six. So it's going to be very complicated. Um, it's really windy out here. Um, but just take this as a piece of information. Roland Garros, for the women, is the hardest Grand Slam to defend. It's only been done 11 times since 1945. And since the open era, uh, five times. So if Halep does it this year, she would join an extremely exclusive club. Listen to these names. Margaret Court, Chris Everett, Steffi Graf, Monica Sellis, and Justine Enin. So she has a serious, a serious challenge ahead of her. Right now she needs to focus though on this match against the Australian Tomjanovic, who is looking to serve out set number two. Eli, thank you very much for now. We're going to check in with Eli a little bit later. He might still be on Philippe Chatrier, keeping an eye on the defending champion. We're going to start with the world number one. She holds the US Open title. She holds the Australian Open title. She was looking to make it 15 Grand Slam match wins in a row. But wow, Daniela, did she make life difficult for herself? Well, it was also her opponent that was making the life uh, for Naomi a little bit difficult because uh, Carolina, you know, we practiced together for so many times. She she works at the same club where I used to play and uh, she's a great fighter. Uh, she's got a great game. She just always gets really tight when she plays against the big names. And that was the same scenario today, unfortunately, for her because she had the match. She played tactically very smart in the first set and uh, 
again, she gets so close to beat the top players, and I just hope at some point she will be able to break that and uh, and show all her potential. But what a comeback from Naomi. I mean, this is where she, she showed why she's number one in the world, because being six love down in your first match in a Grand Slam, being number one in the world, that's not a nice situation to be in. And it was a handful of points there where Shmidlova was just two points, Daniela, from the win. But for Osaka, who comes through in that third set, does she feel good having been tested that way in the first in the first round? Definitely so. I feel like this day can help her eventually to get through this tournament because these are kind of wins that uh, give you the confidence and that no matter how bad you're playing, you can still pull that through. And this is where, you know, she's a champion and she belongs to the top because these players do find a way even though they don't have a good day in the office. Well done there from Osaka to move through. It was a complicated matter as well for the world number five on the men's side. Sasha Zverev seeded fifth, needed five sets, led this in the fourth set. Things got very complicated, four hours and eight minutes. He said to reporters after Danielle, he reminded them that he is indeed the world number five. But do you have him as part of your conversation when we get towards week two? I definitely do. And uh, with uh, Sasha, I think we are sometimes a little bit too hard on him we first of all forgetting how young he still is and for me it's just about time when he's gonna win that first grand slam and also we talked about how important the momentum is coming into this tournament he just won a tournament before coming to Roland Garros so that's huge for his confidence and look if he can go all the way this year I'm not so sure about that but for sure his time will come and I just absolutely love his style he works extremely hard and I think also sometimes we're just forgetting what he's done already in the Masters even so let's hope he can somehow break it through in a Grand Slam as well. Yeah, he must be fed up with these questions being <laughs> asked of him yes. about Grand Slams. When are you going to be consistently going deep at Grand Slams? He's like, hey, I'm the world number five. I am not doing that badly. We have rounded up for you a few of the other results, some of the runners and riders and, and winners and losers from day three. We'll start with last year's semi-finalist, Juan Martin Del Potro. It's just his fourth yeah, tournament yeah. of the year. He makes that comeback. He was a set down in quite gloomy conditions to the Chilean Nicolas Jarry. So really good for Del Potro to have got this done, come through in the four sets. A fellow Grand Slam winner in Victoria Azarenka and Yelena Ostapenko. Two of them head-to-head. -head. This was the match we were so excited for on the women's side. And the winner actually was going to get Naomi Osaka if all the seeds held in the first round. And guess what? It is Azarenka who comes through in this match. Straight sets, 17 double faults for Ostapenko, 60 unforced errors. And you just have to wonder, where does the 2017 Roland Garros champ go from here? Jeremy Shardy will be really disappointed. Now, they called this last night at about 20 past nine. They resumed it today, second match on one. I only played two games, and Jeremy Shardy looked a little bit flat of us. Kyle Edmund, you can see there, was completely pumped up. He was serving first. He hadn't won in five previous matches leading into this tournament, so a really good win for the British number one, the 28th seed, and five sets over four hours against Jeremy Shardy. There must have been some sort of dinner reservation for Madison Keys. 6-1, 6-2 over Evgenia Rodina. 56 minutes played on the court at five, off by six. And we're going to say bon appetit to Maddie, who must be sitting down for dinner right about now. <laughs> Maybe that dinner reservation was with uh, Karen Hashinoff and his wife, because he dropped six games. He steamrolled through the first two sets, 6-1, 6-1. He lost four in the third. Now he's the 10th seed here, Karen Hashinoff. He won that Masters title in Bercy at the end of last year, beating Novak Djokovic. He hasn't had the start to the year that he would have wanted the Russian, but he's starting to build a little bit of momentum. So he'll be delighted, as we've been talking about, to get that Grand Slam first round win under your belt. Another one-time Masters winner just this spring, Fabio Fonini. This was an all-Italian first round battle against Andrea Seppi. And in four sets, the number nine seed moves through. We've never really seriously talked about Fonini as a major contender. Maybe, just maybe, we've got to do that here. We are flying with Caro this evening, or this afternoon, when she actually came through. Heartbreaking loss in the final of Strasbourg at the weekend, but look at that celebration. This is what it means to her. The pressure of playing at home, part of the Roland Garros tournament, but Caroline Garcia, very few problems against Mona Bartel through in straight sets. And 35 aces helped this guy, Ivo Karlovic, become the oldest man at 40 years old to win a Grand Slam match since Ken Rosewall in 1978. He was 44, Rosewall, but this is Karlovic beating Feliciano Lopez in four sets and a big fist pump from the big guy who moves on at 40 years young. It's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? Now, you can get a full rundown of all the results on RolandGarros.com, but we just put another handful together for you because there were so many matches, and we want to bring you as much 
information as we can packed into this half hour. So just another couple of results of, of winners who went through today. There was a win for Luca Puy, the French girl. Absolutely delighted to see him going through, and why wouldn't they be? Taylor Fritz is leading things for the American men here. Arena Sabalenka, very comfortable over Dominika Sibylkova. And there we are down the bottom there, Daria Kasekina. What can she produce on her favorite surface through in straight sets? Okay, that's what was buzzing on the courts, but let's now get to the World Wide Web and our social media segment. Well, Daniela, uh, you mentioned this actually to us off set yesterday, and it's Roger Federer on his off day. What does he do? Well, a fan asked him, did you practice? This is yesterday, and look at Roger's response. Nah, not today. Well, that's just Roger. I mean, he's just so relaxed. And we talked about saving mental energy, physical energy. And, you know, he's, he knows he's playing great tennis. And uh, he's done this for how many years? So he, he knows how to be prepared for his next round. And he knows also that it's going to take him another 14, 13 days by now the, to, to leave the trophy. So he's trying all he can to save his energy because... With him, that's all, all pretty much that he needs. So I, I have a beautiful story that I told you yesterday about uh, when he was practicing on the middle Sunday in Wimbledon one year. And uh, we were there all practicing really hard for almost an hour and a half. And he just came out and hit maybe 15, 20 minutes. And it was like, you <laughs> know, okay, it. I'm good. So with this Tony is Tony Roach, right? Yeah, exactly. Hitting with Tony Roach. So this is Great. how confident he, he is. And uh, I, I mean, you know, yeah, not, I wouldn't suggest this to any other player because it's only the second day of the tournament. So you might want them to hit some balls out there, but you know, there's just Roger and he can get away with it. We're going to stay with the superstars of the game and move on to Serena Williams. Now, I think I might have about 50 followers on Instagram. <laughs> she has 11 million. That's quite a few people checking in on, on what she's doing. And she's, she's pretty good. Actually, no, she's really good, Daniela, with social media and how she uses it. Yeah, she is. And also, it, it just gives you another thing to do during the day and takes, takes your time and mind away from tennis. And uh, it's nice to to be able to see the players, what they're up to during their off days uh, this, this, this time, because in my generation, there was nothing like that. So it's good that she's adjusting to the, to the, to the times that we have now and uh, making her fans happy this way and uh, just letting know what she's up to um, during, during her days off. Yeah, amazing, 11 million followers. Now, <laughs> yesterday we brought you the Maria Sakari bun tie, but um, today Stefano Sisipas saying that he's going to reveal how he does his hair. There's the Sakari bun tie. I love that. And, and Absolutely we need to know that. how does Sisipas do his hair. But I also want to ask you, Daniela, does Sisipas have the best hair on tour? Well, he has a very good hair. If he's got the best one, mm, I have Is to think about it. I'll, tough I'll question, you, right? Should we do that question of the day for <laughs> tomorrow? Are you talking men and women or just men there? I think that makes uh, a difference. We'll go uh, just men. Just, just men. men. Does that help Ooh. a little bit? Roger's got pretty good hair. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, mm. you, have to, you, you have to go with Dustin Rogers. Brown. Has great hair. Yeah. Oh, I have to think about it. Give me give me one day. I'll, I'll give you the answer tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. I'll that's our the, question make, of the day. Make the right? ranking list. <laughs> so we're going to have great hair tomorrow. We are going to head straight back to Eli, who's still on Philippe Chiatre, because there has been a turn of events involving the defending champion, Simona Halep. Eli. Is he you there? Guys? Yeah. Are you there? Hi, guys. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. So we are in a third set. Uh, it's it's amazing how she manages to get herself in such situations because she plays amazing tennis and then she has a tendency to kind of let the game get to her, which is exactly what happened. And now she's getting support from the crowd. There are uh, a bunch of Romanian fans here. The stadium is three quarters packed and all you hear is Simona, Simona, Simona. I mean, we're talking about title defense here and the first round, this is a very tricky draw for her. Uh, it was never going to be easy. She started off, it was three love, very, very quickly. And we were thinking, wow, she might not even be on court when we're going to be on air. And here she is, and, and now they're kicking off set number three. So it's uh, a lot of tension here out in Philippe Chatrier. And Daniela, this was highlighted as a tough match against Ayla Tomljanovic. I actually picked it as the match of the day you yesterday sure because I just know how much Alia Tomljanovic potential has. I played her once in the finals of Pattaya and... Honestly, uh, I got lucky that uh, she made uh, too many unforced errors, but I just felt like I could have been hit off the court any time. And uh, that's what she's shown in the second set. And if uh, Simona is not careful, this might go either way. And uh, this is where she might start to feel the pressure of defending the title. And uh, uh, 
as been said, uh, Simona likes to put herself in these difficult situations. Most of the times, good news is that she finds a way to get through it. But Alia is a tough competitor, and uh, to me, one of the most talented girls. Unfortunately, she mm. had had, had the uh, shoulder surgery, so she hasn't been really able to fulfill her potential. But whenever you see Alia in the draw, it's going to be a tough match. It is the theme of the day. If you're a top seed, then you're going to be tested here on day three of Roland Garros. Now, it's our uh, nightly theme here on the show to do our daily debate. And today the question is, is Roland Garros the most difficult major to win? Now, Daniela, I know which way you're going to go on this because this was actually your suggestion for the question. Now we're going to hear from some <laughs> actually very familiar faces and voices very shortly, but why for you is this a tough one? Uh, just because clay. You know, the matches get so physical and it's so unpredictable also with the weather, with the wind, the conditions. It can play fast, it can play slow and mentally, sometimes as we said, when you have a day like this, you have to stay around for long. Not that you don't have to in Wimbledon, but I just feel like the surface makes it extremely hard, especially for the guys. I mean, b being able to win best of five on clay, mm. that's just so demand demanding, we can't even imagine. And also for the fact that we heard in the women's side, to be able to defend this title, only five women in the history of this event has been able to do that. So that just shows how difficult it is. And at least to me personally, it always felt like the most <laughs> difficult one. <laughs> okay, well, let's see if some, a, a few familiar faces here, let's see if they agree with Daniela. Quick question, is Roland Garros the hardest major to win? Uh, mm, it was for me, that's for sure. <laughs> it's definitely, I never got even close. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Then again, I didn't win here, so. The rallies here go on and on. Um, every, you know, any Grand Slam is hard to win, trust me. I thought for me it was uh, the US Open was the hardest uh, one to play. Probably for most of the players it's, it's, uh, it's hard because it's five sets on clay, two, two weeks. For me it was uh, one of the hardest, I think together with uh, Wimbledon because obviously those two I haven't won. Of course it's demanding a little bit but at one point, uh, and this is a Spanish school, when you, when you eat well and when you play well on clay you can play everywhere. Now there's a little, there was a mini fist pump from Nick McCarville during <laughs> that because Conchita Marsner something that said something I think you agree with. I'm well, sure you talked to her before that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Conchita and I, we've actually had her here on the show. We conspired. Oh, that's why. I, I agree with her. The U.S. Open to me only because it's the end of the season. A lot of people are bringing in some injuries. You're tired from traveling for the whole year. New York is such a different dynamic. The but crowds, the it's commute. It's hard so you can serve it out. Even if you're feeling tired, the, just the rallies are not as long. Well, Pat Cash, Kim Kleisters, they both agreed with you. Yeah. So you've got pretty good company yourself. <laughs> are like you I'm, you're going like to stay I'm on the fence here, aren't you? I feel like I'm just <laughs> looking from, from, shall I say Wimbledon? Because I come sure. <laughs> from the UK. No, I, I agree on, with Daniela on this because the clay, it's so tough on your body. And I think also when you look at the great players who, they didn't win this, they never even reached the final here. It's such a tough thing to do. Yeah, Wait and a also second. It just, yeah. No, no, go ahead, please. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I was, I mean, Gigi, I thought you were going to be Switzerland here, and you've oh, sided yes. with Daniela. No, sorry, Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know we had the slam there. <laughs> no, it just takes such an effort to actually win one rally when mm. you have, especially a, a s Spanish players playing against you. It takes... 10, 12 shots to, to, to win a point. So where do you go from there? And also I agree what was said there, that if you can play well on clay, you can play well on everything. And, you know, like Roger himself, mm. I think that's the best. Yeah. That's the yeah. best yeah. backup we've got here. here. Yeah. There we go. The only Fair one enough. at once. Wow. I, I, I can't I'm, believe I haven't thought about if, this Let's before. see if the people are on my side. We put this question out on our Twitter and on our Instagram. I don't think they're going to be on your Roland side. Garros, over 12,000 votes. Look at that, 12,600. And, oh. You guys, I, I'm <laughs> 0 for 3 here. 72% say yes, and gosh, I just can't imagine the challenge of winning this tournament. Oh. I, I'm not going to change my but answer, though. But it would be easier for you than the US ground. Open, so it would be okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've got to stick to my ground at this point. So uh, it, it's a worthy debate, and um, actually, we mentioned a guy who's won here just once. Can he win here again? Roger Federer is back at Roland Garros in 2019, the first time in four years.
Year after year, the biggest names in tennis, the titans of the sport, return here to Paris for Roland Garros. But it's been four years since we saw this name, Roger Federer, in the draw. And with Roger back, it's safe to say no one quite commands a crowd like Roger. And here is the man. Very happy to be back. Maybe a tiny bit more, you know, because uh, I've missed the last three editions. And uh, the goal was always to play every year. And then it just happened what happened with the knee in the back in, in 16, 17, and 18. I just felt like for my health and everything, it was better maybe not to do it. And all of a sudden, you, these years go by, and uh, you know, you haven't played. When you miss something in life, you're happy to uh, to be back there again for me. And this is the case this year, so I'm really happy to be back in Paris. Wherever Roger goes, there's a buzz about him. The tournament becomes even more of a grand event. We saw it when he walked on court Philippe Chatrier for his first round match. We've seen it in his practice sessions in front of the press. Pretty much anywhere Roger goes, his fans will follow. Uh, when he won his first Grand Slam, I was uh, eight years old. Uh, and now I'm 24, so it's really huge to see him play again at this level. Very, very gentleman. A very emotion to mention his name. We're watching a legend in process, and he's still not, he's still not giving up. He's the best. Hi, Roger. Nice to see you back in Paris. <laughs> Hi, Roger. Hope you win this year. You can do it. I hope you, you will be back next year and the year after. Go, Roger. Go! And while his legions of fans would like the Swiss flag to be flying over Roland Garros through Sunday, June 9th, Federer, he just has to play tennis. And in the meantime, we get to sit back and watch. Well, it's been amazing to have Federer back here at Roland Garros. And actually, you've sort of had a front row seat to what he's done the last 20 years on tour. Uh, look, I mean, I think for all the players, we keep saying this, it, especially for my generation, it was really a privilege just to be able to play in the same era when he's been making all the history, of course, Rafa and Novak as well. But there's just something about this guy. Whenever he enters the tournament side, you, you just can feel his charisma, his aura, wherever he moves. And uh, I have so much respect, of course, not only for him as a player, but how he behaves off the court. It's even more spectacular. And we had a fan crying there. I mean, he was so overwhelmed just even talking about I, Roger I cry Fed. sometimes when I see Roger <laughs> winning. I mean, he just, I think that's why, because with him, he's so pure. And what you see is what you get. And I think every single person in this world just wants him to do well, wherever he goes, whatever he does. And, uh, and I think everyone can relate to him and everyone gets emotional when, uh, when we watch his matches. Hmm. Now, we probably wouldn't give this next test to Roger Federer, being a French speaker, but to some of the other players, and we're going to start here with the current world number one, we've been wanting to find out what they know about the country that they're currently in. Naomi, we're just going to test your how well you know France. First, flip over this card and tell me what you see. A croc, madame, monsieur. Almost. Monsieur? Monsieur. Okay. Coq, monsieur. I've eaten it once on a flight. This is really good. Yeah. Next. Very good. One for one. Ah, oh, this is so easy. Eiffel Tower. Moving on. Oh, okay. Yay. <laughs> Who's that? Um, Emily Maresma. There you go. She seems really cool. Yeah, you've met her? Yes. What category we have here? I have no idea. He's a DJ. French DJ. David Guetta. No? Oh, he's French? Yep. I didn't know he was French. Who's that? Daft Punk. Very good. Daft Punk is French? Yep. What? So you guys are really big on EDM. Oh, okay. Cool. You like Daft Punk? I like Get Lucky. Yeah. yeah. Can I just say that Nick failed? <laughs> Bonjour la France. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm failing tonight. That's the theme of the show. <laughs> he failed Bonjour La France. I just have to say that. Uh, so Naomi Osaka, we saw a little bit earlier, she made it through just under two hours to round two. Someone else is hoping to join her as the former world number one. She has a chance of going back to world number one. It is Simona Halep, and she'll be delighted, Daniela, with this start to the deciding set. Yeah, definitely. This is where you need to be sharp and focused and get the, of a good start in the third set because things might get awkward if you don't. And especially the way Alia has been playing in the second set, she had all the momentum going. So she, Simona definitely is aware of the fact that uh, this is a big time now for her to, to get through this match. We're going to keep an eye on that match, of course. Now, one player that we haven't been discussing very much, he's a man that he would, would like to get into week two of Roland Garros, and he's got a pretty big arsenal of weapons to help him get there, and Camille Pan explains why they could help him make a run at the title. Hi, guys. Today I want to focus on one player, the Argentinian boy, Juan Martin Del Potro. Not only because I love Argentina, it's a beautiful country, but it's also because he's always struggling with injuries and he's coming back at a very high level right away. And he's here in Roland Garros this year. Del Potro can play on any surface, but he's a tall guy. And on clay court, while well, the ball bounces really high, he's really confident playing high balls and uses his huge forehand, which is his best weapon, to play winners from any places on the court. He also has a great eye. That means that he's always anticipating the ball, and he doesn't need any footwork to be right on the ball with big stance to use his great power. See you guys tomorrow for another Focus of a Player. Bye-bye. I love the way she just popped out of a tree. <laughs> there will be more <laughs> from Camille tomorrow. Now, we do want to go back to join Eli, but Eli, you must be confident that Simona Halep is going to win because you have decided to leave <laughs> Philippe Chatrier. Well, yeah, you know, it was so hectic. There's so much uh, going on. I needed to get a little bit of calm and relaxation. In fact, if you guys turn around, Gigi, if you turn around, you could probably see me. I'm right behind you. I don't know if you, you can do that. But anyways, just chilling out here. Court number four. No more matches will be played on this court. No more training. It's very calm. It's nice to relax a little bit. You know, the sun's coming down. And I want to take this moment. Um, it's my Daniela moment. So, um, Daniela, I hope you're not too nervous. You shouldn't be. Uh, I ran into somebody today that wanted to say something to you. So, Daniela, this is for you. Hey, Daniela, uh, me again. <laughs> we've, uh, we've seen each other around uh, quite a while now. But again, I just want to say how much I enjoy um, the, the life that we have shared for, uh, for a long time. Um, started under 14s, you know, playing tournaments together, and now you know, playing on tour for many, many years, and now with these mics in our hands talking about uh, the younger generations. I enjoy um, listening to you when you're talking on TV and, um, and I enjoy talking to you when we're not on TV. So um, it's good to see you and I wish you all the best. Oh, wow. That was lovely. You're getting emotional there. I am very that was emotional awesome. right now. <laughs> we that don't is have so tissue on special. set. So that Look, was under 14. You we go way back with Kim. Uh, the first time we played was under 14 in Bratislava in Slovakia, actually. Um, ITF, a junior tournament. And then, you know, we've been through so much together. We are the same, same age. And uh, obviously, then I admired her when she became number one in the world. And. Uh, we played so many matches together and never managed to even, I think, win a set. I think only one time I won is because she retired. So <laughs> this is how much better she was. But mm. she came also to my retirement exhibition uh, when I was uh, saying goodbye to tennis. So got to say, um, Kim's been one of my best friends on the tour and we shared so much. Um, our families know each other really well as well. And I actually just bumped into her this morning in the Aww. gym. So this is very sweet. Thank you, Kim, so much. Really nice. appreciate oh, that's it. That's really nice. lovely. And, and thank you, that's Eli. Nice. So I did actually see you, Eli, when I turned around on my stool. I didn't <laughs> think I was going to be able to get oh, back. I'm not going to see you. Well again now. That was lovely, Eli. Can you guys still hear me or oh. can I just say something? She's really your good friend because I asked her for some embarrassing stories about you. And she didn't reveal a single thing. Oh, so. <laughs> that's a good that's friend. That's good to know. <laughs> I knew you were going to do something like that, Eli. <laughs> you, you enjoy the calm and the quiet out there, Eli, on your own. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for this evening. We are going to let you know there's still tennis going on. RolandGarros.com to find out who comes through, where, when and how. But tomorrow, this is how we were looking. I want to say, Daniela, that my match of the day is Kenish Kurijo Wilfred Tonga, but I feel it's a match that's going to delight me or disappoint me. 
I I'm completely agreed with that. I, I got to say, whenever Federer's name is on the schedule, that's always going <laughs> to be the match of the day for me because I just can't get enough of watching him play. But also, we must not forget one player that we haven't really talked about just yet too much, and it's Kiki Mladenovic against Petra Martic. That's going to be an awesome match. Uh, I love both of the girls, the way they play, and uh, obviously Kiki, the home favorite, and she's been she's been doing really well so far. And I feel like my match of the day to watch tomorrow is Sisapas against Hugo Delian, the Bolivian who plays a really tough brand of clay court tennis. That's first on the Simone Matu court. So again, we're not agreeing. We don't even have <laughs> two of us agreeing with the match of the day. Try yeah. today. Yeah, we're we're going to get there by the end. And we, the, the debate about the toughest Grand Slam, toughest made, that's going to continue off air between these two. I'm actually going to leave them to it because that's all the time. We'll take it got. outside. They're going to take it outside. I'm going to stay inside. But thank you very much for your company this evening. Don't forget, it's nightly from 7 p.m. local time here in Paris at Roland Garros. And you can go on the website, you can watch it on YouTube, Facebook, or via the app. Good night, guys. Thank Good you night. so much. Bye.